When Jewish shepherds were almost lynched by a mob of Palestinian Arabs near Ramallah, one of the shepherds drew his legal firearm and defended himself and the Jews who were with him. After a Palestinian was killed in this attack, the U.S. State Department put out a statement calling the incident an extremist Israeli settler terror attack. Stay tuned for the real story. I'm Josiah and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Welcome back to the show, guys. First off, before we get started on today's news, today's story, make sure to watch our brand new adventure show that we just released yesterday about the secret illegal takeover of Jewish land in Israel by Palestinian squatters. You definitely want to see that. We actually went into these illegal camps and houses investigating them. It's, per, it's, it's very, very good and uh, also very, very exciting. Stay tuned. Go over to the channel to watch that just released yesterday. Also, subscribe if you enjoy watching the Israel Guys channel, if you enjoy what we do and getting the content to you, out to you guys every single day about what is happening in Israel. And hit that like button. Make sure to turn on all notifications so you never miss an episode of the Israel Guys and what is actually happening in Israel. Okay, so... Last Saturday, the U.S. State Department released two tweets within minutes of each other condemning two terror attacks in Israel. One of these tweets follows the despicable Jew-hating narrative that the Biden administration has made almost normal when it comes to America's attitude towards the Jewish state. Now, let me explain. The first tweet uh, that they put out read, Quote, we strongly condemn today's terror attack in Tel Aviv that killed one and wounded two others, as well as other recent terror attacks against Israelis. We express our deepest condolences to the victims' families and call for an end to these acts of violence and incitement to violence. Okay, so that was the first tweet. So what happened? What happened with this terror attack? Last Saturday, two security personnel were walking down a street in Tel Aviv when a man, Arab man, aroused their suspicions. They turned towards the man to potentially question him. I'm not sure what they had in mind. Maybe they're going to see uh, what he was doing there. The man, who is a Palestinian terrorist from Janine, pulls out a weapon and opens fire on the two security guards, actually hitting one of them in the head. The other security guard quickly drew his weapon, fired, and neutralized the terrorist. Unfortunately, the first security guard, who turned out to be a 42-year-old Khen Amir, succumbed to his wounds and died. He left behind him his wife, Vered, and three daughters. The terrorist was identified as a 22-year-old from the West Bank. He had been hiding in Janine for the last six months and did not have an entry permit to Israel, uh, to what they call Israel proper, the Tel Aviv area from the West Bank. You may ask, why didn't he have an entry permit? Because he had connections. He was very connected to the Islamic Jihad terror organization. When the police searched the terror terrorist body after the attack, they have found a letter on him announcing his intention to become a martyr, which, by the way, in Islam is the term for terrorist. Martyr is another term for going out and killing Jews. Uh, His intention was to become a martyr and and to kill Jews. Now, we do thank the State Department for condemning this attack. Okay, so that was good. The first tweet condemning this attack, this was uh, exactly what needed to happen. The second tweet just sent minutes after the first one, read, quote, we strongly condemn yesterday's terror attack by an Israeli extremist settlers that killed a 19-year-old Palestinian. The U.S. extends our deepest sympathy to his family and loved ones. We note Israeli officials have made several arrests and we urge full accountability and justice. Now, um, before we talk about what actually happened here, before we talk about the actual story, I want to point out the difference in language used in these two tweets. The first tweet makes uh, makes no mention of who committed the attack and actually does not call for the Palestinian leadership to condemn or bring justice to this attack, the attack in Tel Aviv. That's the first one we're talking about. The the tweet by the State Department makes no mention of, of who did it, who perpetrated the attack, and does not call on the Palestinian leadership to condemn this attack. The second tweet about the Jewish terror attack 
makes sure to call out the perpetrators. He calls them extremist Israeli settlers and calls for full accountability from the Israeli government. Now, what happened in this quote unquote terror attack? What is the actual story? Was this actually a terror attack by an Israeli settler against a Palestinian as the State Department insists? Now, while a few of the details from this incident remain unclear, the facts we do have paint a very, very different picture than what the State Department would have you believe. We'll be back to the show in just one second. But first, in a world where hunger still touches the lives of many, there is a chance for us to make a difference. Today, we bring you the story of hope and compassion, the story of feeding more than 8,650 Holocaust survivors and Ukrainian refugees. This number grows daily. The need for food and sustenance becomes more urgent, but United Soup Kitchens has taken action. They have established 22 public restaurants serving free home-cooked meals with honor and dignity, but they can't do it alone. Nobody should ever go hungry, especially Holocaust survivors. Today, you have the opportunity to change lives. Your donation is an act of love and kindness, an opportunity to fulfill God's commandment. Together, we can ensure that no one is left behind and that every soul finds warmth and sustenance. Your contribution will transform lives, offering hope and dignity to those who have endured unimaginable hardships. Join us today, donate below, and participate in this incredible mission of compassion and support. Together, let's feed the hungry, nurture the spirit, and create a world where no one goes without a meal. The power to change lives is in your hands. Donate today and let your kindness shine. Click on the link in the description below. All right, so on Friday, August 4th, hundreds of Palestinian Arabs from the, pal from the village of Borka, which is near Ramallah, came with stones and clubs and confronted a Jewish shepherd who was grazing his flock nearby to the Palestinian village. When the mob of Palestinians approached, the Jewish shepherd called for help and was joined by a few dozen of the residents from the nearby Jewish town of Oz Zion. According to a statement issued by the IDF, quote, verbal confrontations ensued, which were followed by hurling of rocks by both sides and the firing of, of fireworks by Palestinians, end quote. An eyewitness to the incident said the Palestinians were shouting death to the Jews while pelting them with stones and clubs. One of the residents who came to help the shepherd who arrived from the Jewish village of Od Sion, Yechiel Indor, was hit in the head with a large rock fracturing his skull. Now, I was actually going to show you a photo of the injury, but it is so bad that I'm, I'm absolutely sure YouTube would censor it. But you can go down to the source links in the description, and uh, one of the articles there has a photo of the injury, horrible, uh, fracturing his actual skull. This shepherd, before losing consciousness, drew his weapon, for which he had a legal permit, and fired in the air several times. Several other Israelis were injured in the attack, and a 19-year-old Palestinian was killed, along with several others being injured as well, several other Palestinians being injured in this incident. Now, the police claim that the Palestinian was killed by shots from Indoor's weapon. Security forces soon arrived and took over the scene, thank God. Yechiel's in, uh, Yechiel Indoor, the uh, man who was injured and who fired his weapon, was rushed to the hospital where he received treatment. Actually, just yesterday, which was a whole week, uh, just over a week in the hospital, he was released um, from the hospital, from his treatment. Both him and another Israeli, Elisha uh, Yerid, have both been arrested in this police investigation. Now, the police are trying to determine if this was a case of self-defense or not. According to Indoor's attor attorney, Nati Ram, who I actually know personally, According to him, dozens of Jews arrived at the scene, including his client, to protect the shepherd. Indoor fired a warning shot, but was then surrounded and only shot to kill after he was struck in the head by a rock. Now, the police have already ruled out any charges of racism or nationally motivated crime for Yechiel Indoor. The question is, was this indeed a case of self-defense? Now, what you have to realize is there have been several incidents this year already where Jewish shepherds in Judea and Samaria, particularly down south in Judea, have been attacked by mobs of Palestinians and almost beaten to death. Several incidents like this. So for these shepherds to have acted like they did could have prevented more serious harm and even could have prevented deaths of the Jewish shepherds. 
While we're not sure what the outcome of this investigation will be, one thing I am sure of, this was not a Jewish terror attack like the State Department claims. If this was like the attack in Tel Aviv, like the State Department would like you to believe, why didn't the shepherd immediately pull his gun and open fire on the whole crowd of Palestinian Arabs? If his intent was indeed to kill Arabs in a terrorist attack, why aren't there more Palestinians dead? Because the shepherds, the Jewish shepherds, were the ones with the weapons, and the Palestinians did not have firearms. When you look into the fact of, facts of incidents like this, of so-called Jewish terror, or another term, settler violence, all you have to do is use your rational thinking to look at the facts and realize that these are false and disgusting claims made by the media and world leaders like the Biden administration who hate Jews living in the land promised to them by God. Guys, remember, don't believe things you hear about Israel just because the media or Biden tell you that you should. I don't actually think anything uh, you can, uh, I firmly believe, I don't know if you can actually believe anything Biden says these days. But anyways, um, don't believe it. Go and look into the facts themselves. They often paint a very, very different picture. Guys, don't forget to subscribe and get the conversation going down below. Show your support for the land of Israel. Make sure to check out our adventure show. Go to the channel yesterday, exposing the secret Palestinian takeover of Israeli state, li state land in Israel. And as always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back every day, Monday through Friday, with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.